Bob, you startled me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just finishing some work. Well, what are you doing here? I thought you were in New York. I was just calling home. I got in a little while ago. Oh, I had a wonderful time. I caught all the shows and went to the Met, but to be honest, I missed your uncle. Does he know you're back? No, he wasn't expecting me till tomorrow. I was going to surprise him. I called the apartment first from the airport, but he wasn't there, so I thought he must be working late. No, he left here a few hours ago. Told me he was going to spend the night reading manuscripts. Well, maybe he's having a late dinner. Probably. Come on, I'll take you home. Where's your luggage? Uh, downstairs in a taxi. Now, come on, we'll pick it up. <laughs> Finally told him he could sit in with a combo. Well, I'm glad I ate first. What a workout. How'd it sound? Not too bad. What do you want, a review in the music section? Yeah. How about some coffee? Yeah, about five cups. Plain those things wear you out. So does listening. Call for you, Mr. Shane. Would you like to take it here? No, I'll find it. Right. Hello? Michael? Listen, I need your help. What's wrong, Angel? Do you remember Helen Wheeler? No. Well, she's an old friend of mine, and she's in serious trouble. Can you come over right away? Over where? The Sherman Plaza, apartment 23. And, Mike, please don't tell anyone where you're going. Be right there, Angel. Hurry up. You leaving us? Afraid so, Tim. Talk to you later. Hey, well, hey what about the check? <laughs> Mr. Shane, I'm Bob Price. This is my aunt, Mrs. Wheeler. Have you called Gentry? Well, uh, no, I... No? Mike, please don't. Please, Michael, wait. Perhaps I'd better explain, Mr. Shane. Yeah, perhaps you'd better. I just got home from New York tonight. I called here, but my husband didn't answer. He must... It's all right, Helen. 
Mr. Shane, when we let ourselves in, we found... Well, why didn't you notify the police? Well, because I was afraid they might get the wrong idea. This was near the body. Two airline tickets for France, leaving tonight. Made out to Mr. and Mrs. Harry Wheeler. And his clothes are packed in that suitcase. Were you planning a trip with your husband? That's just it. He didn't expect me till tomorrow. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wheeler, but it looks like your husband was uh, running off with another woman. It isn't true. Mr. Shane, you get to know a man when you're married to him. There are certain things he can't hide. The police may not think so. That's why Helen asked Miss Hamilton to contact you. We want you to investigate this. Michael, you've got to help. Helen's my oldest and dearest friend. I promised her. Where were you tonight, Mrs. Wheeler? Well, uh, the plane landed at the airport at 8.30. Then I went to the Montmartre Club to make dinner arrangements for a surprise party. Tomorrow was Harry's birthday. Then I took a cab to his office. I met Bob there. And I brought her right home. When was that? About 10 o'clock. Who did you talk to at the Montmartre Club? Armand, the maitre d'. Now, I'll see if he remembers you. Then you will take the case, Mike? Now, you asked me to, didn't you, Angel? Thanks. Now, as soon as I leave, phone the police. But I haven't been here, do you understand? Well, where are you going? I have several stops to make. But when Gentry shows, phone me at the office. Now, I won't be there, but pretend you're calling me in on the case. I'll be back later. Right. Bob. Is there something I can do, Mr. Shane? Yes, tell me who Wheeler was close to. His friends, business associates. Well, there are his partners, Kenneth Russell and Brad Harper. Partners? They own a publishing house, Medallion Books. I work there, too. Well, I may want to talk to them. Mr. Shane, you don't know me, and I realize you're taking Lucy's word, but... Well, thank you. That's a little premature, Mrs. Wheeler. You may not like what I turn up. I want to talk to Mr. Russell. My name is Michael Shane. Sorry, sir. Mr. Russell is asleep. Well, you'd better wake him. I can't, sir. He told me he is not to be disturbed. Tell him his partner has been murdered. All right. Mind answering some questions? Not at all. When was the last time you saw Wheeler? Just this afternoon. <laughs> We were kidding him about all his women. Just joking, of course. The last man in the world for that sort of thing. Was he planning a trip? <sighs> Not that I know of. There's an important meeting for this morning. He set it up himself. I better let Brad know. Not that he'll be in. He never is. He's a bachelor. I'll try him again later. Is there anything else, Mr. Shane? I'd like to get dressed and go over to Helen's. If there is, I'll drop by your office in the morning. I imagine the police will want to talk to me. That's a safe bet. I lost my wife a few years ago, Mr. Shane. And now Harry. I read something once, something that applies to him. You don't lose a man like that by his death, only by your own. Good night, Mr. Russell.
How long was she with you, Armand? Oh, that is difficult to say, monsieur. When one discusses food, time stands still. Say a half hour? Perhaps. She kept excusing herself to make phone calls. You know Mr. Wheeler? Ah, yes, a fine gentleman. A bien, a gourmet. Was he here tonight? No. No, I have not seen Monsieur Wheeler since... Uh... What is it? Uh, well, I hesitate to say this, Monsieur Shane, but it might be important. Well, go on. Uh, Monsieur Wheeler was here for lunch last week with a companion. Male or female? Oh, remarkably female. Brunette, très chic, the sort of face that you would expect to see in a magazine. She looked to me like a mother. Ever seen her before? No. Perhaps she was a friend of the family, huh? Either that or an enemy. Thanks, Emma. Yeah, but of Oh, hello, Bob. Mr. Shane? You got a minute? I'm sure they told me I could go home. Well, I've got a leading question. Are you positive that Harry Wheeler was faithful to his wife? Of course. Does Medallion Books employ models? Our art staff uses them for cover layouts. Are there pictures on file? I think so, yes. Do me a favor and get the current file together, will you? I'll pick them up in the morning. All right, but I don't understand. No, neither do I yet. Mrs. Wheeler has answered all of your questions, Mr. Gentry. There's nothing more to discuss. I think there is, Mr. Russell. Like why Mrs. Wheeler called Lucy Hamilton before calling the police. And where her husband was going with that packed suitcase. Let's sleep on it, Will. Well, that makes the day complete. What made you decide to hire Mike Shane, Mrs. Wheeler? Well, I... What's the matter, Will? Can't you stand a little competition? This is a murder case, not a track meet. I haven't heard an answer to my question yet, Mrs. Wheeler. Lucy is a very good friend of mine. She... She thought that Mr. Shane would be able to help. Now, Mr. Gentry, I'm very tired. All right. We'll continue this tomorrow. Coming, Mike? I'd like to talk to my client. Sure. Privileged communication. Well, this is one case where I'd beat you to the scene of the crime. <laughs> Good night, all. I'll leave now, too. Bob and I will handle everything. I'll call you in the morning. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Hi, right, Mr. Shane. Hey, Mr. Russell. Good night. Do you have any more questions? I do, but they can wait till you've had a little rest. Lucy, why don't you stay with Mrs. Wheeler tonight? I was planning to. Come on, Helen. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mike. Yes, Michael, what is it? This manuscript. Has it been lying here all night? I think so, why? Wheeler used a strange bookmark. Darling, I expect you tonight at the regular time. All my love, signed L. Yes, he is, Mr. Shane. He's expecting you. In the studio, second door down the corridor. This way. Mm -hmm. Move the knife a little more to the left. That's it. Now freeze. Thanks, kids.
Very nice. Thanks very much, both of you. Oh, hello, Mr. Shane. Say, is it always like this? No, oh, you get used to it. You know, she's the third blonde we killed today. Sometimes the covers sell more books than the writers. <laughs> Do you have that photo file I wanted? Oh, yeah. These are all the models at work for us during the past six months. Oh, fine. Now, uh, where would I find Mr. Russell? Oh, he's up on the roof. Mr. Harper's with him. The roof? <laughs> he has a garden up there. Take the same elevator you came up with. Oh, fine. equal partner. I don't want to hire Shane. Brad, be reasonable. Harry's murder was bad enough. I've had calls from reporters all morning. Now this gets out. Well, good morning, Mr. Russell. Hello, Mr. Shane. My partner, Brad Harper. Shane, I'd like to make one thing clear. My partner and I have a basic disagreement. I don't want you working for us. I didn't know I was. Brad. The least you can do is be civil. Mr. Shane, I know you represent Helen Wheeler. I'd like you to help us out, too. Help you with what? I told you last night that Harry had set up a meeting for today. Medallion Books is planning a merger with another firm. We were going to set the deal this morning. Go on. Because of the merger, we had $100,000 worth of negotiable bonds in the safe. And, uh, well... Well, don't stop. Tell him. The bonds are gone. Who had the combination? Only three of us. Harry, Brad, and myself. Why not tell the police? Because we don't want the loss publicized. Because of the merger. Mr. Shane, we'll pay you $5,000 if you can locate the bonds. Send a $1,000 retainer to my office. Then you'll help? Providing you and Mr. Harper will answer some questions. Like what? Like who was the girl Harry Wheeler was running around with? Harry, that's ridiculous. He was completely faithful to Helen. I'm the Don Juan of this outfit, Shane, not Harry. But it's all right, I'm a bachelor. Were you out with someone last night? That's none of your business. Brad, sooner or later, you're going to have to come up with an alibi. You stick to your flowers and don't worry about me. When I need an alibi, I'll have one. Hello? Lois, is that you, honey? Brad, I told you never to call me here. I had to. Look, there's a chance you may be asked some questions about where I was last night. What are you talking about? If anyone wants to know, I was with you. But, but Brad! Mister, I don't know who you are, but you better leave my wife alone or I'll kill you. Here's where we stand. Everybody tells me that Harry Wheeler loved his wife, but last week he was seen having lunch with a beautiful girl. One of these? Maybe. These are all freelance models who worked for Medallion Books. Mm, so you figured he might have picked one up in the office and started playing around? Certainly would have been convenient. Yeah, but you got so many pictures there. How do you know which one is the right girl? Well, I found a note in Wheeler's apartment last night. A note from a girl. It was signed with the initial L. And these are the only four with a first or last name beginning with L. Well, it'll be a pleasure to check them out. I'll start with this. No, sorry. I think you'll uh, learn more from Armand. Who? It's a maitre d' at the moment. He might recognize one of them. Of course, he's probably home sleeping now. Oh, I'm an expert at waking people up. You want me to check on some of these, Mike? No, but I do want you to check on these airline tickets. They were bought at the Skyline Travel Agency. See if anyone remembers who picked them up. All right. You dropped me off, Tim? Hey! You dropped me off? Oh, yeah. yeah. sure. How's Mrs. Wheeler? Well, she didn't sleep very well last night. Bob Price came over this morning. He's making arrangements for the funeral. You know, there are just too many things in this case that don't add up. Why should a happily married man suddenly turn wolf? Well, maybe you'd think better without so many distractions. Distractions? 
Maybe I better just put these away for a while. Hmm? This is she. Oh, la, 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 la. Uh, exquisite, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a recipe for something like that, eh? Oh, thanks, Armand. <laughs> Could I use your phone? We <laughs> love her. Oh, rush, rush. Michael Shane's office. Mike there? Yeah, just a minute, Tim. Mike. Hello? Mike? Pater. Our man identified the girl. Uh-huh. Lois Fuller, Canyon Apartments, 8th Street. I, uh, I could even give you her measurements. Thanks, Tim. The address is all I need. I can check the measurements in person. I like to play guessing games. Want a drink? Cognac? Mm -hmm. You're too good looking to be a bill collector. You're not working your way through college. So you must be selling something. Yourself, maybe? Sometimes. My name is Mike Shane. I'm a private investigator. Who hired you, Lou? Who's Lou? The guy who did this. Husband or boyfriend? Husband. He likes to show his affection. Be around? Why, you want to start a friendship club? Why not? You're pretty friendly, aren't you? To the right people. Sit down. I hope you're not in a hurry. I like to start my day leisurely. Time in the world for asking questions. About what? About this publisher you've been running around with while his wife is out of town. Funny. He never told me he was married. They never do. Oh, Lou, honey. Uh, this is, um, uh, this is uh, Michael Shane. He's a detective. Lou, honey, I never saw him before in my life. Honest. She's telling the truth, Fuller. I warned you on the phone, didn't I? Huh? Put that thing down. Maybe you won't like him so much with his face cut up. Lou! Lou, please! Helen and Bob are waiting in your office for you. Thanks, Angel. Mrs. Wheeler, Bob, what can I do for you? Mr. Gentry has asked me to come down for further questioning. I wanted to know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing he'll do is go over your alibi. I'm afraid it won't hold up. Why not? Helen was at the Momart Club. She can prove it. I got the police report this morning. 
Harry Wheeler was killed between 9 and 9.30 last night. But that's when I was there. Doesn't the maitre d' remember me? He remembers everything but the time, Mrs. Wheeler. You could have been there one hour or ten minutes. I see. And when the police talk to him, they're going to find out something else. Your husband was seen having lunch last week with a young woman. No, no, there must be a mistake. It couldn't have been, Harry. You must be wrong. Well, even if it's true, Helen knew nothing about it. That's not what the police will think. What do you mean? Gentry's a smart cop. As soon as he finds out that Harry Wheeler was seeing another woman, he'll put two and two together. He'll figure you came home, found your husband leaving, and killed him in a fit of jealousy. That's a terrible thing to say. That isn't as bad as it'll sound when Gentry says it. If you're looking for motives, I had a better one than Helen. Bob, you don't have to. They find out eventually. Mr. Shane. After my parents' death, Uncle Harry was like a father to me. I tried to be a son. Under his will, I get one-third of the estate. That's a lot of motive. It is if you need the money. I do. I've piled up a lot of debts over the past six months. Harry's death bails me out. Why are you leaving yourself open like this? The police would find out anyway. That they would. What about Harper and Russell? What would they stand to gain? Nothing. They still have a three-way partnership with Helen. Do you know the combination to the office safe? No. What about you, Mrs. Wheeler? Harry never told me. He said it wouldn't be fair to Brad and Ken. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mike, but uh, Dick just phoned. No luck at the travel agency. No, I wasn't expecting any. Mrs. Wheeler, did your husband have a passport? Yes. Where is it? Somewhere in the apartment. Lucy, go with Mrs. Wheeler. When you find a passport, call me. Fine. Where are you going? To see Harper and Russell about a love letter. Are the partners in? Yes, they are. They're both in Mr. Harper's office. I'll let them know you're here. Uh, don't bother. I like the element of surprise. Too bad it doesn't always work. Maybe this will. Who is Lois Fuller? Never heard of her. I have. That name sounds very familiar. Didn't she model some of our covers? I wouldn't know. I have more important things to think about. I'd like to show you gentlemen something. Mean anything? No, I shouldn't. I found this in Wheeler's apartment last night. That's incredible. The L stands for Lois Fuller. Now, the way things look, Wheeler was planning to fly to France with her. Maybe with $100,000 of Medallion's money. I refuse to believe Harry would do such a thing. Why wouldn't he? He's not the first man to fall for a woman. And remember this, Ken. If he didn't take the money, either you or I did. Well, that's ridiculous. You're not a thief, neither am I. That leaves Wheeler. Mr. Shane, will you excuse me a moment, please? You've really been digging around, haven't you? That's what you're paying me for. But so far, you haven't turned anything up. No, I wouldn't say that. When you're a detective, Harper, you get sensitive to people's reactions. You know when they're lying. So? You know Lois Fuller. No. Want me to bring her around here to meet you? Yes? Brad, would you ask Mr. Shane to come to Harry's office, please? He wants you. I heard him. Yes, I know all about it. Well, I'm making it my business. Now, you listen to me, young woman. Stay away from his wife. I don't want her to find out about this. It would kill her. Who are you talking to? Pay you money to keep quiet? Don't be absurd. Haven't you any decency? Hello? Hello. She hung up on me. Was that Lois Fuller? Mm-hmm. I thought I could reason with her, get her to deny that she ever knew Harry in case the police question her. Where'd you get her number? Found this in his desk. Harry's private address book. Mind if I take these with me? 
I'd like to show them to the Foy girl. It's funny. I always respected Harry, his principles, integrity. I suppose you never really get to know a man. Sometimes you do, after he's dead. I guess it is more comfortable waiting inside. Thanks. Came here lots of times. Never when Mr. Fuller was here, right? You think he was crazy? Fuller would have killed him. Or her? No. He used to knock her around a lot, but they was in love with each other. Suppose that bruise on her shoulder was just a love tap, hmm? What about these other two men? Were they ever here? I don't think so. You sure? Say, listen, I got better things to do than keep track of her boyfriends. I ain't no peeping Tom. All right, that'll be all. Throw me a bone, Will. I have a story to do. Well, vital statistics. She was shot in the back. 38 caliber, probably. Silencer. Our ballistics men will be able to tell whether the bullet came from the same gun that killed Wheeler. Did you find the weapon? No, not on the premises. Is that all? Any other questions, ask Mike. No, I'm flattered, Will. You might also be booked. I want to talk to you downtown. Why? Well, just for old time's sake. Well, what about Harper and Lou Fuller? I've got a pickup out on both of them. Harper will be easy to find, but Fuller will be another story. Come on. Anything I can do, Mike? Yeah. Maybe you better stand by to see my lawyer. <laughs> Michael Shane's office. Dick, is Lucy there? No, Mike, I'm not in the store. I want you to come down to police headquarters. Wait in that parking lot around the corner. There's a man by the name of Brad Harper, and he'll be coming out. All right. Now let me know where he goes. I'll find Lucy, and then call me down here when she gets that passport information. Okay, Mike, I got it. Right, bye. I think you two know each other. Sit down, Mr. Harper. This is getting a little annoying. I've told you all I know about Harry. That's right. Now you can start talking about Lois Fuller. I never heard of her. 
Really? That's strange. She was a model for some of your book covers. And her landlord says you know her quite well. Care to deny it? All right, I'll tell you. Lois and I were seeing each other. She's married. For obvious reasons, I didn't mention her. Particularly to Shane. Anyway, I was with her last night. She's my alibi for Harry's death. You can call and ask her. That's a dead connection, Mr. Harper. She's been murdered. What? And you didn't know? Of course I didn't. What were you doing this afternoon? I was at my office. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? Are you accusing me? Does the shoe fit? Why would I kill Lois? She's the only one who gave me an alibi for last night. Maybe she wouldn't lie for you. Shane, I'm warning Hold you. it. You two want to fight, do it on your own time. I'm not booking you, Harper. There isn't enough evidence. Yet. Stay available. All right, Mike. Now we're going to play a nice little game called Question and Answer. Extenuating my foot, if my own brother did what you did, I'd throw him in jail. Not if he trapped a killer for you. Ah, oh, that's pie in the sky, and you know it. Hello, Gentry. Hmm. Hmm. Hello. Oh, hi, Angel. I wondered what happened to you. Uh huh. Are you sure? Oh, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, talk about the nick of time. What'd you say? I asked her to find Wheeler's passport. She did. And? It expired last year and hasn't been renewed. Well, interesting, very. Isn't it? If he didn't have a passport, he wasn't planning a trip to Europe. The tickets and the suitcase must have been a plant. Well, that knocks out Mrs. Wheeler's motive. If her husband was faithful, she had no reason to kill him. Except for money. It goes for Bob Price, too. Hello. It's for you. Oh. Hello. Yeah, of course it's Gentry. What? Hold him, I'll be right over. Well, we found Lou Fuller. Good. Where? In your office. I'll tell you why I came here. I came here to kill him. Why? Because he murdered Lois. That's not true, Fuller, and you know it. What are you hiding, anyway? <laughs> now, nah, sit down. There'll be no more of that. Mister, you can lock me up for 50 years, but I'm still gonna kill that guy. How'd you know your wife was dead? I came home this afternoon. She was... She was just lying there, like, like maybe she was asleep or something. And I touched her. Why didn't you call us? What do I care about you cops? Lois was dead. I ran from the apartment. I didn't know where I was going. I just walked the streets half out of my mind. And then I remembered him. What about him? He was after my wife. Yeah, I found them together in the apartment today, loving it up. Oh, yeah, he killed her, all right. You came here to settle the score, is that it? It's a pretty good story, Fuller. But maybe you killed your wife. It's a rotten lie. I loved her. I loved her. How did you show it? With your fists? What does he mean by that? Your landlord says you two fought an awful lot. Sure we did, but that doesn't mean we didn't love one another. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. No. 
She used to make me jealous sometimes, playing around with other guys. And she always came back to me. Me. It isn't easy being married to a beautiful woman. You wish you could put her in a box like a doll. But you can't. You want a gun? What do I need a gun for? When I got these. Hello. Mike Dick. I'm in a phone booth across from the medallion building. Harper just went in. Thanks, Dick. I'll take it from there. You want me to stick around? Not on your life. Go home and read a book. Will. Hmm? How detailed was your search of Wheeler's apartment last night? We didn't miss a thing. Why? This is one of the times I ask you to trust me. I have to leave. After what you've done? After what I've done. All right, go ahead. Follow him and call me at the office. I want to know where he goes. All right, take him in. I was working late. A lot of details Mr. Harper asked me to take care of. I mean, now that Uncle Harry's dead. Where is Harper? Brad? He was here just a few seconds ago. I think he went up to the roof. stolen bonds? What are you talking about? A motive for murder. A hundred thousand dollars worth. What's that supposed to mean? I'll paint you a picture. Harry Wheeler robbed the safe because he was running away with Lois. You killed him, found the bonds, and hid them up here, somewhere in these flowers. That's a lie. Is it? The police won't think so. Shane, I'm gonna level with you. Somebody knew I was going out with Lois and set me up for a fall guy. I tell you, it's a frame. I know. You know? Yes, but I'll need your help to prove it. I'll do anything you say. He's not gonna get away with it. Oh, yes, I will, Brad. Ken! I always knew you wanted to control the firm. But I didn't think you'd be willing to kill for it. Why not? I built it. It should be mine. So you worked out a nice little plan. Steal the bonds, kill Wheeler, and frame the remaining partner. The bonds and the business are yours. You made a few mistakes, though. Such as? You didn't count on Mrs. Wheeler. She came back a day early, and the police suspected her instead of Harper. That's why I left Lois's note in Wheeler's apartment. He knew the note would lead the police to Lois. It would look as if I killed Harry because he was going off with my girl. That note, where did he get it? Lois sent it to me. One of her inter-office love letters. I intercepted it. Talked it over with Harry, and he decided to have lunch with her and scare her off. Harry was a moral man. Leaving the note was the mistake. Really? Why? The police are very thorough. If the note had been in the apartment when the body was found, they'd have turned it up. You were the only one who came in after the search. That's when you planted the note. It seems you've earned your fee. Now it's time for payment. With what? A bullet? From the same silencer that killed Wheeler? Not for you, Mr. Shane. You're going to take a trip straight down. The bullet's for Brad. Now are you going to explain that? Simple. I came up here and found you and Brad fighting. He dumped you over the side and pulled a gun on me. So you struggled and the gun went off? Exactly. Nobody will believe you. They have so far. Ken! <laughs>
up here? It must be. This would be the best place for him to hide them. Because he didn't trust me. You blame me? And why didn't you get here five minutes sooner? The traffic light held me up. Well, Russell's the one you want. And well, you better have your men go through these flower pots. Why? Someone's planted some lettuce. Wheeler was running off with Harper's girl. That's why Russell bought the tickets in Wheeler's name and uh, packed the suitcase. Oh, so then Harper would be blamed for the murder. Right, but if the police talked to Lois, they'd find out that she was with Harper when Wheeler was killed. That meant she had to be silenced permanently. But you told me that Russell talked to her on the telephone just before you found the body. How did he have time to kill her? phone call was for my benefit, to give him an alibi. You see, he'd already murdered her. Then he just dialed her number and pretended she was on the line. Don't you have any questions, Tim? There are a few questions I'd like to ask you about the Wheeler case. Oh, no. <laughs> Here are some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane Mysteries. This is her room. Greta Morton, Mike Shane. Greta! without interruptions. I sense a definite hostility. Well, that's unfortunate because I've got to ask you a few questions. Don't answer me, B. We're leaving. Are you? Well, you're not going to shoot me. The sound of a shot would panic this place. I might risk it. After all, you did break into my office, didn't you? Take the girl into the other room, see what she's got to say without Mr. Shane around. Don't. Do what I say. Lucy. Beatrice Drake, Miss Morton's secretary. Oh, how do you do? B, Lucy Hamilton. Hello. Okay, now that you know her name, forget it. If anyone calls or comes to the door, you never heard of her. Right. I'll pick you up in the morning. And don't let her out of your sight. Good night, Michael. Good night. You know anything about a torn thousand dollar bill? Why? Because she might have been killed for money. This was in her hand when we found it. What would you do to the guy that had the other half of that? Book him for murder. Well, mark me up. 